ಗಂಗನಾಧಿಪತೇ ನಮಃ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸೊ ಟುಡೇ ಐ ವಾಂಟ್ ಟು ಡೂ ದ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಫ್ಯೂ ವರ್ಸಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಇಂಟ್ರೋಡಕ್ಟರಿ ಮೆಟೀರಿಯಲ್ಸ್ ಬಿಫೋರ್ ವಿ ಗೆಟ್ ಟು ದಿ ಆ್ಯಕ್ಚುವಲ್ ಬುಕ್ ಅ ಗುರು ವಾಚಕ ಕೋವಾಯ some people have asked well, what is the benefit or what is the result of studying or practicing according to this book and here are the verses the benefit of this light of supreme truth is the understanding that there is not the least such thing as attainment since the supreme self is the ever attained one whole thus the mental wanderings caused by striving towards dharma artha and kama are also removed this is wonderful uh, this is directly ajatta this is ajatta vada there is no attainment there is no enlightenment or unenlightenment the one supreme self exists everywhere in everything eternally so what is there to realize <laughs> you are already that tatvamasi there's no path there's no sadhana <laughs> this is ajatta this is how ramana sees this is how mahapriyava sees this is how the incarnations the various gods see uh, they're fully enlightened like ramana and they see that everyone is brahman everything is brahman god is everywhere see this is why there's no difference really between the path of bhakti karma raja and jnana yogas huh but this is the highest platform we can't pretend to be on this platform before we actually realize it but this is just to let us know this is where we're going okay <laughs> if you read this book and you really get it this is the ticket you're buying okay this is where we're going self which is one's own true nature is the substratum of all happiness in this and other worlds therefore to be firmly established in self unshaken by thoughts concerning the various other paths karmas yogas etc that lead only to the pleasures of this and other worlds is the fruit of this work drop all those desires for karma yoga bhakti yoga huh? even raja and jnana yoga huh? just drop it yoga means joining huh? but are there any two things to be joined not really there is only brahman there is only the self so when we realize this that's the end of all seeking searching sadhana path and all these notions because it is who we not only really are but always have been and always will be we can't be otherwise than the self <laughs> so uh these are the final verses of the introduction and the next few verses are glorification of raman guru in response to the great and befitting penance tapas performed by the ocean girdled mother earth the nameless and formless supreme brahman itself took the glorious name and form of shri ramana sadguru may those spotlessly pure feet sat chit existence consciousness be in our hearts self that pure brahman which is itself the monosyllable shining as the heart of all beings and things is the excellent and sweet benediction to this collection of the guru's sayings 
which removes the delusion of the ignorant ones. <laughs> well, the monosyllable, there are two versions of, of this. One says that the monosyllable in the heart is Aum. Uh, and it is a plausible explanation for that. But there's another explanation given by Sadhu Aum that the syllable in the heart is Ahung. Ahung means I am. And it's made up of the first letter of the alphabet, A, Akar. And the last letter of the alphabet, H, and the Anushwarga, N. So, Ahung, I am, is the monosyllable in the heart. Because we always exist. Huh? Wherever we go, there we are. <laughs> Because we can't get rid of ourselves. We are conscious and we are consciousness itself. All the rest is something else added on top. And it's not really who we are. It's mind, body, ego, thoughts, all this other stuff. But that's not the reality. The reality is self alone. The experience of our own existence which is the supreme reality, jnana itself, shines as the mystic silence and is the true self behind the fictitious first-person I. May that absolute supreme self, known as the feet, be upon our heads. Feet is padam, param padam. The supreme feet is also the supreme destination. Uh, those feet uh, manifest in this world as the Guru, Ramana Guru, Ramanacharya. Uh, in recorded history, there have only been a few beings of the same caliber, of the same qualification as Ramana. Ramana attained spontaneous, complete enlightenment at the age of 16, without any study of the Vedas, without any guru, without hardly any religious practice other than ordinary family activities. So can anybody match this? Not even the Buddha. Huh? The Buddha had to leave home in his late 20s and search for six years to find enlightenment. So Ramana is even higher than the Buddha. He reformed our understanding of the, the degenerate uh, Hinduism established by Shankaracharya, showing by his personal example how it should be understood and how it should be practiced. So of all the Acharyas, of all the Gurus, Ramana is the greatest, no doubt about it. But each one has its place and each one has a teaching for a certain stage of the path. So all the Acharyas should be honored, but they should also be understood in the proper perspective. For those who turn within, the perfect asset is the grace of Guru Ramana, whose true form is the sleepless sleep Turiya. It is the sweet fruit whose juice is the supremely pure bliss that creates in the aspirant an ever-increasing taste, free from aversion. And it is the beautiful lamp which, without need of kindling, leads one to the heart. Wow, what a beautiful verse. Magnificent verse by Muruganar. So when we renounce <laughs> everything, uh, maya, all form, everything that has a beginning and an end is fit only to be renounced. So then uh, do we have any asset at all? Yes. <laughs> 
we have this Guru Ramana, whose true form is the sleepless sleep, waking sleep, as it's sometimes called. What, what is that? Turiya, the fourth. There are three ordinary stages of consciousness, waking, dreaming, and deep sleep. But then the root, the source of all of them, is the fourth, Turiya. Turiya means the fourth. Uh, the fourth state, it's only called the fourth because it can't be explained. Buddha called it Nibbana, Nirvana. But really, <laughs> no name does it justice. We all need these three states of consciousness. Waking is for activities external in the world. Dreaming is for catching up on all of our um, mental trash <laughs> and unresolved emotional issues. The third stage, deep sleep, where we are aware, but there's nothing to be aware of, is actually union with Brahman. We need this deep sleep. We need it so badly that in sleep experiments, if people are deprived of deep sleep by being woken every time they go into it, after a few days, 10 or 12 days, they go crazy. Uh, they lose it. Why? We need this happiness. We need this bliss, this union with Brahman. It is an essential nutrient. Yet it happens while we're asleep, so we're not aware of it. But in Turiya, we are aware of all three states simultaneously. So this Turiya is the supreme state of consciousness in which we uh, clearly see the illusion of the other three. So this is the supremely pure bliss that creates an ever-increasing taste, rasa. This is called Adi Rasa. The Adi Rasa is Ananya Bhakti, the love of one's own self. Not as ego, but as Brahman, the Supreme. And this is the beautiful lamp, the light of God, which we see in meditation, and which, if we follow it, leads us to the Supreme Truth. My master, Sri Ramana, has taken possession of me, destroying the miseries caused by my inattention to self. His beauty is his oneness with jnana, and his true form lies beyond both attachment and detachment. His feet are the perfect example of all precepts of the truth. So here's the final verse by Muruganar, and it really sums up the whole, th the whole thing. Uh, he surrendered to Ramana. Ramana took possession of him. Ramana says in one place, our destination is that which consumes us. If we're consumed by lust, our destination is animal birth or low human birth. If we're consumed by anger and hatred, then we'll take birth among the demons. If we're consumed by God and Seva, we take birth among the civilized human beings. If we're consumed by love, especially love of God, we take birth in heaven. If we're consumed by self-inquiry, atma vicharam, uh, we take birth among the siddhas. And then when we finally realize the self, we don't take birth anymore at all. <laughs> Actually, we never have, according to Ajatavada. Therefore, our aim should be to realize this truth, because this is the bliss. Uh, this is the source of all happiness. This jnana, which is beyond both attachment and detachment. 
Attachment and detachment are two out of the three forms of ignorance that the Buddha talked about are the beginning of our downfall into the material world, into existence and suffering. What's the third one? Thinking that we know something. <laughs> the mind is called Agnya Chakra. Agnya means I don't know. The mind is ignorant. If we follow the mind, we get in big trouble. But if we follow Ramana, we get out. So that's the choice we have in front of us every moment. His feet, his instructions, his example, and his uh, presence, really, uh, are available to us at all times. When we choose them, when we allow them, and when we make them our prime asset, this leads to the highest bliss of this state of Turiya. Aung Tatsa, Aung Harihi Aung.